Hi, welcome to the Cool Tool Studios. I'm Ardell Bryan, and today I'm going to show you how to make this darling little ginkgo pendant project. This pendant is going to be created out of a single slab of clay. I'll show you how to use my jewelry shape templates to create a layered effect, and I'll also demonstrate how to use my jewelry shape template findings and bales. This crazy little template is going to be one of your favorite tools because it allows you to create findings that are an integrated part of the slab. So this piece is actually a single slab of clay. And this is a much better way to create findings and connectors and veils because there's nothing to paste on or embed into the piece. What happens when you insert a wire or a finding is that when the piece centers, it shrinks. And so that leaves a lump wherever something's been embedded. I wanted a cleaner look, I wanted a stronger piece, and this little findings template is going to allow me to do that. So let's get started. I'll show you everything that you need, and you're going to be surprised at how quick and easy this project is. The first thing I do is condition both my hands and my clay with our product called Slick. This will keep the clay from sticking to my hands, and adding it to the clay gives it a much nicer texture and it doesn't dry out nearly as quickly and it just seems to work much much better this way. I'm making the clay into a little patty about a sixteenth of an inch thick and then I just butter it with slick on one side and roll the edges in and knead that slick into the clay. I want to make sure that I spend a couple of seconds and knead it in completely and then roll the clay into a ball so that it's ready to work with. Then I'm going to roughly shape the little patty into the a sort of a square shape since I'm going to be going for something like a square shape here. Now I've got a number six and a number five rolling template and I'm going to roll the clay out so that I have a slab that's 11 cards thick. Then I'm going to put this piece on a tough card and this is where I'll be doing the rest of the work. Now I'll be using the tapered squares jewelry shape template and we'll put a little bit of slick on that so that it doesn't stick and then I want to place that so that I leave enough room for the bale on top. I'm just going to roll it with the roller so that it's even with the height of the template and I'm going to put a little bit of slick on the ginkgo template and place that where I want it and just sort of press that down and then I'll use my roller to roll that one so that it's level with the template as well. I'm going to remove the templates and now I want to, I'm going to score some veins into the leaf so that it has a little more realistic look. And then I'm going to use one of the round openings for my bale. I'm going to place that so that it lines up exactly with the top of the pendant. And then I just need to press this because all I really want here, I'm not going to try to cut this out, I just want the impression. So I'm just going to press that in place and remove the template. And now I'm going to mark the center of the bale where I want to drill a hole using a divot tool. And I don't need to go all the way through, I just want to mark the spot so that my drill has a place to go when, I, when I'm ready to drill it. And now I can just cut roughly around the outside of the shape. I don't want to try to get perfect. This is just a rough outline here and later I'm going to sand down to the lines that I've created. Then I can remove the excess clay and set the piece to dry. Now the piece is dry and I'm ready to clean up around the bale and around the edges. I'm using a four cut metal file. This is a needle file and I just need to file down to the impression of the outline and clean up all these edges. This is going to give me a much nicer finish um, rather than trying to cut around it and then clean up the edges afterwards. 
and I can use a sanding stick to do the broad edges and when I get around the bale I need to be careful that I don't bump into it. The clay is very very soft and it sands very easily. And I use a dry paintbrush to clean off the dust. For the inside of the bale here I'm using a triangle diamond file and this file sands on all sides so I need to be very careful that I don't go beyond the place that I want to file. I just want to clean that up. So now that I have all my edges sanded nicely I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole for the bale. I'm using a two millimeter drill in my swivel pin vise and I'm setting this just on my uh, 3M polishing pad. This makes a really good surface for drilling. What I'm doing is I'm very very carefully and slowly drilling through the clay and it's very very soft so I don't need to apply any pressure at all. I just allow the drill, the weight of the drill, to do the drilling for me. And I can feel once I hit the bottom and then I start to turn it backwards and forwards and you can see where that lifted up lets me know that I've gone all the way through. Then I can turn this over and clean off the back and make sure that my hole has gone all the way through. And I want to give it one final good dusting before I fire. Any dust that I leave on the piece it will fire in place and I don't want to have these crumbs on there so I want to make sure it's nice and clean. So this piece now is ready to fire. Now that I've fired it I'm going to polish it up. Um, I could do this by hand but I really prefer using a Fordham flex shaft and I'm using a satin finishing wheel. This is a coarse wheel in my Fordham and very quickly you can see I can clean this up. I'm going to do the sides, the entire piece with this one little tool and I get this beautiful satin finish and what's nice about this magic carbon that I've used to fire it in it comes out with an antique patina so I don't need to worry about applying an additional patina I simply clean it up and it's ready to wear I could also finish this piece by hand if I wanted to I could use a steel scratch brush to clean it up or I could put it in a tumbler. If you use a scratch brush be sure to use steel because bronze is harder than brass and brass would start to break off and become work hardened because you need to use a metal that's harder than the metal that you're polishing when you're using a scratch brush. Now this piece is complete and very very simple and very beautiful. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project. Be sure to visit us online at www.cooltools.us. Visit our learning center and you can download a PDF file that contains complete step-by-step -step instructions plus a list of the supplies that you'll need to create this project.